is up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing something a little bit different, which is not that different for my channel at this point. So there you have it. Welcome to me spending all of my money converting my Forerunner to something that I can camp in forever. This is going to be part one of a hopefully extended series kind of thing that I'm working on here. So this week I'm going to be showing you how I made reflective shades to go all the way around my car so that creepy people don't stare at me while I sleep. Because that's weird. With the exception of one window that was a little tricky, this is actually a really easy and relatively inexpensive mod to make to your car. So if you're looking to get into the car camping world, this is a great place to start. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so we are starting with a 24 by 50 foot roll of Reflectix and I'll go ahead and link the one that I used down in the description box below and some scrap cardboard, but you're on your own for that one, but I'm sure you can figure it out. For tools, all you're really going to need is a measuring tape, a box cutter, and a sharpie, and then something to take notes with. We're going to start by cutting up the cardboard boxes to the approximate size of each window to create a template. Keep in mind that the windows are obviously mirrored on the left and the right side, so you really only need to make a template for one side. Then we're going to measure each window at the tallest and widest points, noting where things are not square or consistent throughout. You'll want to reference these dimensions later after we trace. Next, have someone hold the cardboard outside the window so you can trace the opening. This was tricky on the back windshield, so those measurements we took earlier will come in handy here. Now that we have all our windows traced in the spirit of measure twice, cut once, we're going to go ahead and make sure that our templates match the measurements that we took for each window, and then we're going to go ahead and cut them out using a box cutter. Here I used a square for leverage. Also, you just want to be sure to have a scrap piece of cardboard down to protect your blade. All right, now on to the annoying window. So I approached this window the same way I did with the others, minus the tracing, because obviously there's no hole in this window. I measured all the angles and drew them onto the template, but with so many rounded edges, I couldn't get it right. So like after three hours, literally three hours, I got so frustrated and I just called my dad, who's an engineer. He's just way cooler at this kind of stuff than I am. And uh, spoiler alert, you wanna know what his solution was? He eyeballed it, yeah, yep, yep. That's how annoying that was. <laughs> so then I get in my car, it's literally like a thousand degrees outside, and I go to my dad's house. He helps me fix my <laughs> my tragic template for the annoying window, and it fits perfectly, because you know, of course it does. And we end up with these five little templates that represent each of the windows on my car. And they actually worked out really, really nice. And then the easy part came, and we just had to trace the templates onto the Reflectix. It was super easy, again, just be sure that you have a little piece of cardboard down to protect your blade. And then you just breeze right on through these bad boys until we get to the annoying window. And then we just cut it out a little bit larger than our, again, eyeballed template. <laughs> Um, we cut it a little bit larger than the template so that we could leave it a little bit of extra room to cut it down and make sure that it fit nicely into the windows. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We packed everything up and we ended up with a full car's worth of Reflectix. So we loaded them in and I, they work really great. Are they the prettiest things in the world? No, but you could definitely spice them up by sewing some fabric onto them and making them a little cuter, which I intend to do down the line. But for now, I mean, they do the trick. They keep the sun out and they block people from seeing me and uh... I like them a lot. That's it. That's all I got for you. That was the first step in making my car car camping friendly. Like I said, this was a relatively easy and inexpensive mod to start with. It took me maybe six hours total, but of course the annoying window was like half of that. So learn from my mistakes. Go forward. Try this for yourself. If nothing else, you've now got a full reflective barrier between your precious vehicle and the terrible, terrible sun. Which, if you're like me, you're sweating right now and that sounds really nice. The next couple videos in this series are going to be making a bed slash storage system for the back of the Forerunner. Some kind of safe metal screen that lets me put the windows down while I'm gone because you don't want to die in your car. 
some DIY awnings and then at some point I will walk you through everything that I carry with me when I go so if you're interested in any of those mods or DIYs go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below I would love to have you again if you enjoyed this video give it a big thumbs up leave me a comment letting me know where I should go camping first and I will see you in my next video bye Wash out? Not wash out. Wash out? A little bit? Maybe. That looks like toilet paper right there. <laughs> it's not, I swear. Uh, you, if. <laughs> full reflective windows. Sheets, covers, curtains. Full reflective thing. This is unnecessary, honestly. Places, everybody! Places, places!